Okay, maybe I can work a little bit more because this is pretty good too. Ooh, the slide's pretty dirty. Let me see if I can clean that up. Maybe it's under the cover slip. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it must be in the mounting media somehow. All right, so we've got a something in the dermis here, multiple islands and nests with some cystic spaces in them. Very focal connection to the epidermis. Look at those cells. They're so pretty, right? Because they're just so perfectly round and monotonous. And as you guys probably know well by now, I love like perfectly round, monotonous things like glomus tumors and stuff like that. I don't know why. It's just so visually appealing. And look, you know what's interesting where it connects to the epidermis? The sharp cutoff. Like that's the edge of the tumor right there. And then that's the epidermis. I'll go closer to show you. I find that sharp cutoff really helpful for this group of tumors. And then, we have cystic spaces, and they have some secretion in them, some dried up secretion. And over here, what you can see is that this cystic space is actually a dilated sweat duct. And here's the secretion is one evidence of that. And number two, look, right next to it, we've got little tiny ducts. And sometimes it's hard to tell a true duct from just an artifactual hole in the tissue. So one thing when I'm looking for ducts in an epithelial tumor to look for, for um, a nexal differentiation, and, which is what's going on here, I like if I see a hole that's lined by this really dense, sharp line of pink, we call that the, the cuticle, okay? And so that little pink cuticle lining the inner surface of a sweat duct in a tumor, that's really helpful evidence that you are dealing with a true um, sweat duct. Sometimes the, the duct space will actually be lined by their own little cuboidal or columnar cell layer that looks different from the cells of the rest of the lesion, and that's really helpful too. I thought I saw that over here somewhere. Yeah, you can kind of appreciate it here, right? Like a little bit. Like see this one right here? See how the cells are like lined up right around the edge of the channel, and they look kind of different, like different in their arrangement at least than the rest? These are all sweat ducts too. Here, 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 there. Here's a dilated one. Here's more. So it's nice. Sometimes you really have to hunt around to find sweat ducts in this type of tumor. But in this one, it's abundant. There's also, these are not ducts here. These are actually glycogenated cells, actually epithelial cells. So that's actually clear cell change. And then the stroma, this is also not a duct. This is actually dermis, because how do we know it's dermis? It's got blood vessels in it, right? Blood vessels don't run in the middle of epithelium, and they certainly don't run in the middle of a cystic space. They're in the dermis. So if you can see a blood vessel lined by endothelial cells and you've got some blood in it, doesn't matter how pale the stuff around it is, you're actually in the dermis. It's just the dermis has a bunch of edema, which is pretty common in sweat gland tumors, particularly this one. So this is an example of something in the acrospiroma family of tumors. I think of them as a family that have a few different lesions in it that all are closely related. So hydradenoma, clear cell hydradenoma, nodular and cystic hydradenoma, ecrine apocrine, whatever name you want to apply to it, hydradenoma. And then poroma, which poroma look, uh, and hydradenoma have very similar features. The difference is that hydradenoma usually grows as a nodule or multiple nodules down in the deep dermis or sometimes even the subcutis. Poroma usually grows in the epidermis and sends elongated finger-like, uh, uh, elongated, expanded reedy down. And then you have something like this, which looks kind of like an overlap between those two, but is sitting here in the superficial dermis but in this section, not connecting the epidermis. So if you wanted, you could call, the, on this section here, you could say this is a dermal duct tumor. So dermal duct tumor kind of is basically, it looks like a hydradenoma, but it's very superficial in the dermis, or like a poroma, but doesn't have a connection to the epidermis. And um, the, the point that some people have made is that there's maybe no such thing as a true dermal duct tumor, that if you just cut deep enough, you'll eventually find a connection to the epidermis. And I'll tell you what, even though we often teach hydradenoma as being a deep nodule not connected to the epidermis, I would say about oh, 10 or 10%, 15% of hydradenomas I've seen have areas of connection to the epidermis. And I, I, the reason I learned this is because sometimes I've seen lesions that on a shave biopsy were called poroma, and then a surgeon went and excised it, and on the excision it was clearly hydradenoma. So I've seen basically what looked like poroma, hydradenoma, hybrid tumors, and that makes perfect sense because they are part of that same acrospiroma family. And all of them are defined by basically 
one cell type as opposed to like, you know, spiradenoma and cylindroma, which are a separate family. They're, those are more blue and the acrospiroma family is more pink because they have more abundant cytoplasm. They look kind of like keratinocytes, right? And in, in, in the deeper hydradenomas particularly, you tend to have a lot more kind of squamoid, keratinized looking cells. In the poroma end of the spectrum, you tend to have much smaller, rounder cells with less cytoplasm. So sometimes we say that these are poroid cells. If they're very small and round and like very perfectly uniform and monotonous like this. And particularly in poroma, when you have this epidermal connection, poromas or hydradenomas that connect to the surface, either way, they tend to have a very discrete, sharp cutoff. They're one of the, the epidermal tumors that have a sharp cutoff between the tumor and adjacent normal. Another tumor that does that, that doesn't really look like this, but it would be clear cell acanthoma. Also has a very sharp, discrete demarcation between tumor and normal epidermis. So here, it'd be easily just call this benign acrospiroma, or you could say dermal duct tumor if you want. It doesn't really matter. They're all benign. They're all the same spectrum. And, and we wrote a paper a few years ago about um, adnexal tumors in, uh, for surgical pathologists in you know, plain language to try to be morphologic and practical rather than you know, focusing on the esoterica. And my fellow, uh, former fellow Ed Fulton did a really great job uh, first authoring and putting that paper together. And I liked one concept that he basically came up with and said that he liked this idea of this is kind of like pink modeling clay. And it's the same stuff. It's just if you make it deeper nodules, hydradenoma. You make it some nodules in superficial dermis, dermal duct tumor. You make it some, some finger-like projecting reedy that are expanded and sticking down from the epidermis, poroma. If you put it just in the epidermis without the expanded reedy, you can call it another thing, hydroacanthoma simplex. So we've got like all these different names for basically the same tumor that just has a morphologic range. And I thought that was a really nice uh, way to explain that. I'll, if you're watching online, I'll put a link to that paper down below. It's free on Archives of Pathology. But I thought Ed came up with a really, really nice uh, practical concept there. And I like that a lot. But uh, these are pink tumors, and they do tend to have a lot of clear cell change in some cases. In this case, it's only focal, but hydradenoma uh, or dermal duct tumor or acrospiroma, whatever you like, same, same basic concept, and it's benign in this case. There are malignant forms, or they're much more uncommon, of course, but, but there are some malignant forms, but they're going to have a lot of atypia and infiltrative growth. Oh, and you can have calcifications in many different tumors. You can have calcifications.